you allowed your heart to open up. You were dying at that moment, and you gave yourself over. So it was, it was like a rebirth happening at that moment. I was just coming back from the chemo, and I started feeling fainting. And I just happened to cross a mirror, and I saw myself in the mirror, and I got scared. And I was starting to feel that I was losing consciousness. I was dying. I was having a very severe adverse reaction. I couldn't even cry. I was agonizing in pain, and then I cried. I, I, I felt, like I said, the pain that Jesus felt on the cross. And I said, I actually talked to Jesus in that moment. I said to you, Jesus, I said, my pain is nothing compared to what I live right now. But I said, please spare me, you know, take it away from me. And it, it was, I think, probably because it was so genuine and so coming from such the soul that he came and and the pain just went away. I was walking with my friend Peter and Peter was telling me that he was taking judo lessons and at that time judo was really cool stuff you know for kids you know uh, and I wanted him to show me. I went head first right into the concrete Oh boy, but from the tip of my skull down my spine, it just exploded. And I let go at that point. I released the chaos. And as soon as I let go, the pleasurable sensations began. And that's when I became aware of a little tiny point of light right there. And it was intense and brilliant and, and like a zillion times brighter than the sun. It was so beautiful. And I knew I had to go there, but I, I don't know how I knew how to, I, but I, I did it. And um, that's where the love was. And I kind of got sucked into this light, it got bigger and more intense and more beautiful. We need to learn to receive love. Welcome to the Art of Conscious Living. I'm so very pleased today to have as my guest Billy Sunday Mars. He's written a book called Fit for Love. This is coming from a male perspective, a very strong perspective. He's an incredible man that has an incredible history and I'm so pleased to have him here today in the Thank studio. Thank you very much. So a woman has to realize that foreplay begins long before the bedroom. It takes washing the dishes for her, drawing the bath for her, allowing her to feel, and then she feels nourished. She feels like he cares because he's taking the time to notice things that she needs other than sex itself. And by doing that, we'll breed compassion, as they say, self-reflection does, to understand that we're all looking to experience life and our source on Earth. This is what I want people to know. Know yourself, know your partner, understand other people. We can't love what we don't understand. If we understand ourselves, we'll understand others, and we'll all be able to live in a much higher and better way. Lily Oglesby, she works with children. She prepares them for the world at a very, very young age, grade school, teaching them about gardening, permaculture, nature. If we are going to expect children to save the planet, we need to teach them to love it first. What does so. this really mean to you? Um, I think, it, for me, it just means so many people, children and adults, are very disconnected from the natural world, and yet there's all this talk, you know, we have to save the oceans, we have to save the forest. There's some people who've never been to the oceans, who've never been in a forest. And so the work that I do um, is getting kids to the ocean, out in the forests, or just out in their own, you know, schoolyard garden, connecting with the natural world so that they have that bond, that understanding that lends itself to love of the natural world. It helps us to just wash away all that stuff that's kind of nonsense and that doesn't really matter in our life and get very real and on our path. And I think it really, Nature Connection really supports us in, in being on our path, whatever that may be. So you've got Puppet A, Republican, Puppet B, Democrat, Demo uh, Democons, Neocons, same force, right? So. You can put your head in the sand and hope it'll go away because someone says there's a tornado coming. Put me head in the sand. I can't hear anything, I can't see anything, but 
your head's in the sand, but your bum's still in the air, and the tornado's still coming. Mm -hmm. Now, if you lift your head and face it, you can take avoiding action and make, and make sure you're not harmed by it. You stick your head back in that sand, it's coming, and before you know what, you're spinning head over doodah in the sky. Right. And this is what we're faced with now, Victoria. We, we look, we, we, we um, get our heads out of the sand, we face this, knowing the numbers we have, and we say we're not having it. And then it won't right. happen, because it can't happen if enough of us say no. A man's relationship to his tears, how he learns to relate to tears. Some of the earliest things are, you know, they don't cry, be a man grow up, I'll give you something to cry about. And so men actually lose contact with their ability to cry and to still be a man. We're supposed to eliminate some of these emotions and we're supposed to eliminate tears. You've been an educator in San Quentin prison for the last 18 years and now you're retired and you brought the peace program there. So what was that all about? And well, where were feelings and crying and connecting to their, to their pain? Where does that play into all of that? What we started doing in the program was when you peel back a man, you start going to what was he like as a boy? And where did he get the operating instructions about how to be a boy and how to be a man? 99% of the men that I worked with in San Quentin, when I asked them their first thing that they knew about tears, what was the very first thing you heard about tears? And it was, I'll give you something to cry for. Stop mm. crying. Be a man. And what I, what, I, what I live for now is the common unity of tenderness. You know, how tender can we be to each other? How forgiving can we be? How, how much peace and love and how much understanding can we generate?